you will probably remember from uh, intermediate algebra, perhaps elementary algebra, or maybe for some folks it may go all the way back to high school, uh, where you were in algebra in high school, that there are three different ways to solve a system of equations. We're actually going to define a, a fourth way in this course, but the three main ways to solve a system of equation, equations is by graphing, by substitution, and by elimination. And it's important to point out, I'm, I'm going to highlight the, the, the graphing here in this uh, particular uh, little mini lecture, because um, graphing the solution of a system of equations, uh, graphing a system of equations tells us what the solution really means, at least in one particular context. So let's take a look at a system x uh, 5x1 plus x2 equals 3 and 2x1 minus x2 equals 4. Um, looking at this particular system, in fact, it's really tempting for me just to say, well, look, those already cancel, right? So I'm going to get 7x1 equals 7. That tells me x1 equals 1. Not doing graphing, by the way, in case you were wondering. I just kind of went off on a tangent there and decided this was too obvious to let go. It's, it's an easy one to do by elimination. So since x1 equals 1, I can plug that back in. I can pick either equation, but I'll plug it back into the second one. And that gives me 2 times x1, which I now know to be 1, minus x2 equals 4. So 2 minus x2 equals 4. And if I subtract 2 from both sides, I get negative x2 equals 2. So x2 must equal negative 2. So I have the pair of numbers x and y equals equal 1 and negative 2, which I can choose to write in a coordinate pair uh, format. And this sort of begs the question, why do we write it that way? Why do we write it in, in uh, coordinate pairs? And again, you'll probably recall from, from algebra, and this is how this particular uh, little lesson started anyway, um, that what, what these two numbers represent are the coordinates of a, a, a point. Right on uh, on a two-dimensional plane. So if I plot the point one negative two, it was about there. That is the solution to the system of equations. But what does that mean? Well, the system of equations. I'm going to write this as five x plus y equals three, and two x minus y equals four. Because as I go to graph these, it's more familiar, more comfortable. Uh, to see equations of lines in that form. So let's subtract 5x from both sides of this one. I'm going to get y equals negative 5x plus 3. And with this one here, I'm going to get negative y equals negative 2x plus 4, which of course I can rewrite as y equals 2x minus 4. And if I graph both of those lines, um, well, let's just do it and see what happens. y equals negative 5x plus 3 has a y-intercept of 3, and so I've got a point there, and a slope of negative 5, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, go over 1, and not only is that point going to be the intersection of my two lines, it's the other point or another point that I, uh, I, I find when I use the, the format y equals mx plus, mx plus b to write um, the equation in the form y, m, y equals mx plus b to graph the line. Let's graph the other one. y equals 2x minus 4. That's a y-intercept of negative 4. And a slope of 2, so up 2 and over 1. And again, that point is not only on the line, but it's the, uh, the other point that I come up with when I use this format to graph my line using the slope. So the point 2 1 comma negative 2 not, it is the intersection of those two lines. Um, and since lines are straight lines, there can only be one place where uh, there's a single point 
on both lines. And that's the kind of the, the crux of what I'm trying to get at with this video is that there is only one possible place where two lines inter intersect. First of all, there's only one place that that can happen. And where it does happen, that point is the, is on both lines. And it's the only point that's, that does that. Right? There's, that's the only point that can be on both lines. There are a couple of exceptions or a couple of special cases. But in general, when we talk about the solution to a system of equations, what we're saying is the one point that satisfies both equations. The one point, the only point that is on both lines. Okay, and so linear equations, uh, the graphs of linear equations are lines. And so it's really easy to talk about this in two dimensions. We have an x-axis uh, and a y-axis, an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. Um, we have two lines, we have two variables. Where those two variables, uh, where those two lines are both satisfied is a single point. And it's the only point that does it. Okay. Uh, now the special cases are, and I'm just going to jump straight to the graphs with this one because um, I think that's easier to to demonstrate than uh, algebraically. There are two special cases. One is the case where your your line, say one of your equations, maybe has a line that looks something like that. And the other equation has a line, uh, a graph that looks something like that. And they are, in fact, the exact same line. They may not look like it initially when you look at the system, when you look at the problem in the exercises, for example. There may have to, you may have to do some algebra to, to, to get the equations to look identical. But when you graph them, they land right on top of each other. And when this happens, uh, there are essentially infinite solutions. Because the solution to a system of equations is the one place, or we'll just say for now, the place where the lines intersect, this pair of lines intersects at every point along the line because they're the same line. So there's an infinite number of solutions. Both of these cases here, we are going to call consistent. Okay, these are consistent systems. There are solutions. We can find them. There's at least one. Sometimes there's infinitely many. Um, there are never two, by the way. There's either one or there's an infinite number, right? A consistent so system of, of equations has at least one solution, possibly infinite, infinite solutions. The other possibility is that you have a system where one of the lines maybe looks like this and another one of the lines looks like this, uh, these lines are in fact parallel, and so they never intersect. This kind of system we call an inconsistent system. And it has no solutions. So a system of linear equations can either have zero solutions, one solution, or an infinite number of solutions. These are consistent. This one is inconsistent. Now, so far we've only dealt with systems of linear equations with two variables. But you can have systems of linear equations with three variables, or 17 variables, or nine variables. Um, we won't be de dealing uh, too much with that, with any of those cases. Um, we'll talk about three variables here in just a minute. Uh, but we won't be dealing with much other than two and three variables until we get to matrices, just because uh, these systems are part of the reason they're so kind of intuitive, if you will, is that you can graph them. And once you get away from two variables, you can't graph them on a plane. Uh, with three variables, you can graph them in 3D space, and we'll take a look at that in just a second. Um, but in four variables, we can't graph them. Right? So we can't really talk about the, the, the point as a solution uh, with a, a geometrical representation. Right? So in two and three variables, we have a geometrical representation. In four variables or more, we do not, at least not in the, the realm that we can 
um, we can en envision, right? Um, you might think of four variables as representing um, X, Y, and Z, you know, a, a, an out direction, a back direction, and an up direction, and then a time component, for example. Uh, but that's beyond the scope of this class. I will say that um, one of your exercises will be to look at a three-dimensional um, graphical uh, representation of a system of equations and try to decide whether that system, just, just the graph of it, is consistent or inconsistent. And if it's consistent, does it have one solution or infinite solutions? And the idea there is just to think about what the, um, where the one point is. If there is one point that satisfies all three equations. Um, because we're in R2, because we're in two dimensions on the, the screen that we're looking at right now, we have an X direction and a Y direction, which we also know now as X1 and X2, right? If you want to, to label them that way. In uh, three dimensions, you might have something that looks kind of like this. And uh, notice that the, the entire plane, the, the screen effectively that I've been drawing on, you know, so this graph here or this graph here, there are two lines that cross, we call the X and Y axes, and there's a single line going through them. Uh, to get any point on that line, I have to go over and up, right? To the right and up, or to the left and up, or to the right and down. To find a point in, in uh, three space, right, in, in 3D space, I have to go out in the x direction, along the x direction, and then out in the y direction, and then up in the z direction, right? So I've kind of got a point floating in space here, and that's sort of how we represent that. Um, but that's just one point. Is it a point on a line? Well, it could be, but when you look at the uh, exercise in particular that you're going to be doing with this one, you're going to be looking at planes. Right. If you have a collection of x, x's, y's, and z's that all satisfy a particular equation, then that equation represents or is represented by a, a plane in um, in three dimensional space. So you might have a plane kind of at that angle, and another one maybe intersecting it, sort of here. And what we're looking at is where do they intersect? Right. Do they intersect uh, along at a point, at a single point? Do they intersect at a line? Do they intersect at all? Do they intersect everywhere? And remember that if they intersect everywhere, there are infinite solutions. If they intersect at one point, there's one solution. If they don't intersect uh, at only exactly one point, then they're in, uh, or, or have infinite solutions, then, then it's an inconsistent system.